Oh, I've decided to just turn my pumps off, quicken the process. Got my bottom drain open, so it's filling up but draining straight away. And the water's emptying. This has been in the space of 15 20 minutes. Well, I'll say about 15 minutes. So, in another 15 minutes, this will hopefully be down another half of what it is. And I'll turn my bottom drain, um, turn my drains off, and let it fill back up. And then later on, put my pumps back on, and uh, that will obviously, instead of the water going in and then trickling out, I'm uh, like I said, I've speeded up, so I've dumped all the water off. Not all of it, but a good percentage, and that should give it a click quick, um, you know, dissolve the ammonia. That's what you call a water change. So I just thought I would uh, share that, so it's not, you know, because otherwise I'd be mentioning what I'm doing and not visually showing, and it just think that I've just been pouring this in like this all the time. So when this gets right down, I'm going to put some more uh, sodium bisulfate. <laughs> So the um, big water change has been done, completed it last night, filled the pond back up um, and I must have took out, I would say, um, it went down a couple of good feet, um, it wasn't by off, I would say about 40% of the water volume, 40-45%. Now I've got my water test, done a water test. And it's slightly better, not much better. Now, what I can say <laughs> from when I've cycled ponds before, it really does take a lot of water changes to get it back down. It can be quite relentless. Um, so as you can see, the nitrate is it's raining, I'm afraid. The nitrate is slightly better. I would probably say it's still there though. 10, in between 10, 20. Um, and then they're not that they're not the easiest things to read to be fair and this is still hang on, let me try and get that because you're meant to have them just in front of the uh, so I think oops <laughs> I don't think it's as dark as yesterday but um, it's still not got rid of it so um, wow we've got this stormy weather it's um, in the UK, just to sit in the last couple of days, so it's a bit of a miss. Yesterday weren't too bad, and today I'm um, just by the pond on a water test, make sure everything's okay. Um, now, one bit of news I have got, I've got rid of seven fish. Next door neighbours had them because they've got a bigger pond down the garden. So I sold seven fish, ones that I uh, bought for a couple of hundred pounds about four years ago and I've basically transferred them on and just got my money back and they've had them. So uh, as you can see, the fish uh, is not as busy in there now. So um, that should help no end because seven fish less and one of them is the biggest one, the uh, Asagi. I'm going to miss that fish. I've got an Asagi in there and she's got a slight bent spine. It's a lovely fish, and um, but I didn't pick them. I inherited them from you know someone closed a pond down, and I got this uh, fill. This um, is like an air 95 liter per minute air pump as well that I got. So you know I've made my money back. Um, I've had them for four years, been looking after them, but hey, they've gone to a good home now. Hopefully the next door I can pop my head over to the bottom of the garden and see them. And I, and I got this pump as well at the time, so I'm going to go inside now because that wind is picking up. So water is better, but not much. But saying that, after the water test yesterday with the water going in, I have been catching the fish yesterday, so I've really disturbed this pond. This is why you want an overflow on your pond. Fish don't mind it. 
Might take my nitrates down a bit. <laughs> the ammonia. Happy days! I'm back by the pond. Oh my god. Half full. So, what am I up to? Well, I've decided to dump off the water again to try and get this ammonia in check and the water in check. Um, I've noticed some of the symptoms, if you like, on some of the koi is worsening. So I'm going to have to do a scrape this weekend as well. Um, if I can get a step closer. Probably people have never seen the pond like this unless you've seen me very early video. So it just shows you the construction. This is actually a um, Firestone pond liner, one mil rubber. Really great product actually. So if you're looking for a liner, I'd, you know, minimum wise, get a Firestone rubber, one mil. And it, you know, it gets really flat. I've really done the corner as well as well when originally done it. You can see it balks out a bit where the liner's folded behind. You have to just watch there's no folds behind because there's a seam there. In the corner so obviously water gets behind if this and if your top is folded here somewhere you get leaks you have to be really careful with that so make sure your folds are higher up and really over um so back to the fish on the surface of things again they look right but if you look closely and i'm looking closer this morning i've seen a bit more flashing again there so this after my last water change they seem to settle down and now the just last couple of days it's like spiked up again so i put another pond ball in but if I can get a closer look, what, what alerted me more than anything is most of them now, or a few of them, are looking less vigorous in colour. Um, you're probably not going to see it. So if you look at this one here, if you look at its fins, it just looks grey, like it's got a grey sheen to it, like its slime coat is thickening um, as a reaction to maybe parasites or the water. And then if you look, closer again some of them have like the back of the fins just got the odd sort of split um, and my yostagoi Kiko Kurayu is where is it that one's I've noticed today acting a little bit quieter feeding they're all feeding great but I noticed it was just sort of hanging in the water. There's a couple of them just hanging there, like they're in a bit of a daze. So the real telltale signs, them. So, um, so yeah, you you can't really see it to be fair, um, but I can. So that I can try and get see that on there. Look, there's like a like a grey slime coat to them to it uh, the white on some fish don't look as white a bit of a greyer appearance um, this one here flashing there's the one down there and I've noticed that one has developed this like saw on its side it's like almost like a little volcano so I've got to probably get that one out and have a look because it's a scaleless, if I'm honest with you, scaleless koi, doitsu. I've not found them as resistant, if I'm honest with you. I don't know whether, you know, I suppose it can work both ways, scales. I suppose it offers a protection, but also it can arbor, you know, parasites and so on. So I don't know. So maybe it's just me and my perception of that. Um... So if I can get hold of that one, I'll show you. So if you look at this Achiba, you'll... So that, see that? See them got a bit more of a greyer appearance? I don't know if you can, it's picking up. That one definitely has the Goshki. Shintaro. Um, so yeah, yeah look, so this one here, can you see at the back end there? It's raised and it is like a wide sort of volcano, that sort of 
it's like round round with like edges raised like a protrusion so that's obviously being affected so yeah so these things I suppose are really easy to overlook um, I can't see it. I'll probably get that out this weekend and show you. That one's got a bit of a mark on its side, look there. So that one's got a bit of mark there, look. Not that red thing, that's uh, it's obviously it's Benny, but just on its side there. So you just note and all these things add up and it's worse than last week. As you'll note also, there's seven fish less here. I got rid of seven fish. And it, a coincidence, but it almost like it's coincided and it's got worse since I got rid of them, which is like daft. It's not, it's not related. The water's obviously going to do better with less fish in there. Let me see. So yeah, a bit of a bummer, but hey-ho, so I'm going to have to have a think about what I'm going to do. Like I say, my first reaction was, I know the ammonia is still high. Um, so I've opened my bottom drain, which that's it. It's about stopped now, so I can turn off the waste valves and get get some water back in here. And I would say I've probably changed. That's probably dumped five thousand liters, and I did about. 4,000 litres last week. This is about 50% now. I'm not messing about. I'm going to try and really dump it now and get it full. Get some sodium thiosulfate in again. I've already put some in to neutralise it when it goes in. And then when I top it up, apparently you can't overdose on th sodium thiosulfate, apparently. So once this gets filled up to about halfway, I'll put a little bit more in. To just make sure that the chlorine is not um, chlorine is not affecting them. See that's one scrape in there. And once it's back up at weekend, um, reevaluate, get a couple of the ones that are flashing, scrape them, and we'll look under a microscope and see if the, what parasites they've got. I checked only a few weeks ago. And there was nothing, I couldn't find anything. Fluke are the easiest one to give it, the easiest ones to find. And I couldn't find anything, I was surprised actually. But I wouldn't be surprised if I find fluke this time. Because fluke can catch old quick at this time of year. Spring into summer, really just kick off like that. But hopefully I don't find anything and I can put it down to the ammonia in the water. And the effect of the ammonia and the nitrite. So we'll see. Let me get this pond filled back up. Um, let's have another look at the plant filter and it's beer now obviously it's only half full some lovely lilies these aren't what they said on the actual label which is disappointing so a note to people buy them in flower nymphia sea oaks I don't know how to say that sea oak lovely orangey one and i thought oh yeah i'll buy that it was reduced at the time because it was end of season and it's bloody flowered and it's got this white flower lovely flower but it's not what it bloody is anyway so tip buy plants in flower especially lilies unless you're getting them dirt cheap and it's worth the risk which i did i got that for a tenner actually i think nine pound ninety nine so it was a really good price, probably a fiver off sometimes in some places a tenner. So yeah, it was a good deal. It's a nice big leaf variety as well and looks quite resilient. So I don't mind, but it is still a disappointment. So anyway, back to the fish and uh, back to the pond. Come on, England. England won last night in the final. Not happened in my lifetime and I'm 47 bloody marvellous so success so far last three games have been absolutely mint have been brilliant so if we win the final we do if we don't we don't for me it's going to be a tense one hopefully we do it 
but we'll see. But either way, it's been fabulous. Been great relief to watch and tents and all that stuff. So no moans from me. Bloody marvellous. Back by the pond, as normal. And as you can see, the water is, well, pond, I say, not the water. The pond's topped back up again. Um, it's been a few hours since it has been. It's in the evening now. It's a bit of a, it's a summer stormy time of the evening. Not got any, um, not any rain or anything yet today, but uh, the clouds are a bit moody out there. Um, anyway, I've shown you earlier that the um, fish, getting some marks on them and sort of deteriorated somewhat a little bit. You see on this kayak, it's got a bump on its head on this side, raised. So um, I've changed the water. My alarm's just told me it's five minutes just past, so I can look at my nitrate reading now. And as you can see, since the last video, that has definitely gone down by half, I would say, from 20 to 10, which is good. Um, the ammonia has come down, I would say, because it was a bit moodier than that. <laughs> but it's still not great. I would say that's 0.5 or just starting to nudge below 0.5 so I think in an ideal world this pond of 10,000 litres potentially I did about 4,000 litres at the weekend and 5,000 litres today I definitely say I drained this by off the filters were all drained the plant filter was drained and this was drained as well, which is uh, this old 10,000 litres, and then the filter's old extra. I think something like that. So, anyway, so yeah, so after those two water changes, I'm still left great, but not so great. So, I'm going to look on my chart on the last video, or was it the part of this one, on the Mankey Sankey website. You can get a chart and you can have a look at the relationship and the toxicity of ammonia with the relationship to pH and temperature. So I know my pond water is 17 degrees. Um, I know the pH, I'll test my pH. I think, it should, well, last time I checked it was 7.8. I've done 50% water change today, so that might have affected it. So I'll have a look at that and I'll have a look at the chart and I'll see what the toxicity is. I'm not expecting anything to change. And at these levels, looking at the chart, the toxicity levels, even though there's ammonia, the toxicity level should be, it shouldn't be that toxic or less toxic, should be less toxic to the fish. So I'm not convinced that the ammonia is what's caught in, causing my issue in the last month. Now, Funny enough, it's been a few hours since the pond was lower. There's obviously fish still got marks on the side, but some of them look better already after the water change. Um, so maybe it's a combination of ammonia. The toxicity level is, is toxic, but not as toxic as it could be because of the temperature and the pH. However, it's still toxicity there, it's still not good having ammonia, so it's got to get having a negative effect to a mantic. And it's clear, if you've got ammonia in the pond, which you always will have, but if it's above a certain level, then it's got to be harmful to the fish in some way. It can't be good. Um, so a couple of, of flashing. Um, I also think the change in weather as well, the atmospheric pressure, and the humidity don't do that good. I don't know. I've just got a feeling that the atmospheric pressure um, don't has a don't have a positive effect on them. So with all those that combination of happenings, um, it's causing this problem. Now i have not got time to do it tonight, but at the weekend, if the weather's nice, I've got to try and find a spell where I can pick out a couple of fish. This one. I had out earlier, it's got a terrible mark on its side there, looked like a raised um, protrusion, which is a bit weird, I want to get to that and get that clean. Um, 
You can see it on its side there. It really looks bad, and that's just come out in the last week. It really has a sort of like a protrusion, like an explosion. It's strange. Um, there. It looks like they're all waiting for a bit of food. So, yeah, I've got to get that one out, have a look at its side, see if I can see any parasites. There, look at the back tail from that back side. And then treat accordingly. Now, I've got some malachite, um, I've got some chloramine tea coming, just in case, just to stock up. Um, so I will see where I go from there. Here we are again. Back by the uh, pond. I've done a massive water change again today. Filled it, uh, emptied it right down to my bottom drain. Um, I think this is the fourth water change I've done. Um, so what I've got now is slowly getting there hopefully you can see on the actual video of the different tests I've done so far um, you see the ammonia going down now I'm a bit mad at myself in a way because I've been using uh, sodium thiosulfate uh, to as a dechlorinator now I don't know why, but in the back of my mind, something was niggling me about ammonia and thiosulfate. So, um, I'm not into the chemical side of things, but thiosulfate it has a reaction. The chlorine. What's that noise? The chlorine and ammonia bind. And when you add the thiosulfate, the um, ammonia the chlorine goes so then you're just left with the ammonia as a particle so it actually if you use thiosulfate as a dechlorinator it actually uh, puts ammonia back in your pond so it shouldn't be a problem for most people in normal circumstances but if you are dealing with ammonia issues then obviously it is a problem because you're doing water change to remove ammonia but then it's increasing ammonia um, so there's that fish again look the new one it's only been in there a few weeks well about a month or so um, like I said I've said before I don't think the weather's helping it's getting stormy again now so the atmospheric pressure is um, giving us a hit again so hopefully the air will clear um, the fish are flashing because of all the changes water changes and, and again, like I say that's gone over five minutes now so there's still work to do it's still showing green but I was down here and I'm looks like it's still about there but I'm getting here now um, so hopefully I'm getting out of the realms of toxicity now I'm giving up on water changes now anyone that is trying to deal with ammonia and nitrite it's absolutely relentless trying to remove it with um, water changes it's it's unbelievable I've I bet I've used in a week um, 15,000 litres bet you um, rain starting to come now so I better be quick and uh, wish you well for this week however just a quick one so I'm ditching, doing water changes. I've got it down to roughly where I want it to be now, hopefully. Um, I'm bit going easy on me feeding, and I've ordered some NT Labs um, ammonia remover. And it, um, it's actually uh, a media. Oh, I forgot what it's called, the media now. It was in there, it was locked in but I forgot. But anyway, what I will do is, that will be the start of my next video for next week. So you're seeing this week now and it will be Saturday morning by the time you should be seeing this. England play tomorrow in the final of the uh, Euros. Happy days for everyone that's English. 
not so happy days if you're Scottish, Welsh and Irish because they are really bitching at the minute. But um, happy days no matter what happens. Going to enjoy this weekend. Um, and when this NT Labs ammonia remover comes, I'll show it, put it in the media bag, put it in my filter and see how that goes. Uh, this stuff you have to remove it every uh, two months. So it's eight ninety nine a bag. So I'll go into that on the next one. It's starting to rain. Waiting for some food to come. Have a great week. And uh, please subscribe. Please hit that um, like button or dislike button. It's, I think they both do a bit of good, to be fair. <laughs> so if you're an eater, it actually does good as well as the, the good, if you know what I mean. So um, happy ponding. Join the friendly koi keepers. It's a great group. Up to over 14,000 members now. And uh, hit the notification bell. Have a great weekend.